From Nicosia, we went to Kyrenia, along the most beautiful path in the world, leading halfway up the valley, or rather through a deep ravine full of myrtles and pink laurels. The town itself, situated by the sea, being very picturesque. Nowhere have I seen anything so beautiful, nor such rich countryside. Anywhere one turns one's eye, the view changes, but it is always ravishing. And our eyes look for the little town. They search the inhabitants at Vrisi with their strange looking gods. They search for the cemetery of Vunus, their sanctuaries and their idols, the snakes and the doves, there where the first inhabitants of Karinia felt the blossoming of their land. A small piece of land, fertile, bathed in sun, kissed by the sea. It is here where the first Achaeans landed, the Mycenaeans, the Cretans, the Lacedaemonians, all travellers, merchants, mariners. Amongst them, the Achaean Kipheas, the great general. It was he who built the small town of Carinia. This small Greek town followed the path of history as the rest of the island. They fortified the city to face the Assyrians in the 8th century BC the Egyptians in 560 BC, the Persians in 545 BC, the Phoenicians during the 5th and 4th century, a city with its Greek kings and Greek inhabitants, Demonikos and Androclis. A ship sailed along the shores from Kos to Rhodes, to the coast of Asia Minor. Loaded with sweet wine, it sank outside the little town of Carinia. Today, an empty and naked carcass, yearning for the open sea. Today, an object in a foreign environment. As the Romans conquered the island, they strengthened the old fortifications and protected their ships from the stormy sill. They built their houses, the known Palathkia, and decorated them with rich mosaic floors. Dolphins and birds decorated the rooms. The inhabitants heard in secrecy the message from the apostles. They hid to celebrate in the caves of Hrisokava. And then the churches appeared, Agia Ekaterini, Agia Mavra, next to Hrisokava, the Virgin of Glijodisa that softened the worries of the burdens of the people of Karinia, the Virgin of Hrisospiliodisa, of Bodamidisa, of Faneromeni, of Trimithkyodisa, a virgin for every hope and for every dream. Karinia had her own guardian angel, the Archangel Michael, who threw a rock and sank the ships of the Arab pirates. Archangel Michael is the patron saint of the little city of Karinia. As the Byzantines took over, they feared the dangers that would come from the seas. Evil always comes from the seas. They fortified the castle, they built the chapel of St. George, another one in the castle of St. Hilarion, they tried to keep the evil away from the little town. Richard the Lionheart is now the king of Cyprus. The fortified castle of Carinia offers safe refuge to the former ruler of the island, Isaac Komnenos, but in vain. The island is bought by the princes of Lusignan. Feudality now rules. Gothic churches with arches appear and barons and nobles are the inhabitants of the Royatico. Catholic monks try in vain to convince the folk to change their religion and beliefs. The Abbey of Belabais is built during the 14th century. The French rulers fortified and expanded the existing castle, their stronghold. Elaborate fortifications protect the city and its inhabitants. Kyrenia and her fort share the destiny of the island. 
In 1232, the castle echoes to the lamenting of the Longobard mercenaries. In 1373, the curses of Queen Eleonora d'Aragon travel from the Tower of St. Hilarion down to the city. And the years went by, and the island passed to the hands of the Serenissima. Venice ruled. They too came from the sea. They too brought pain and sorrow to the townsfolk. On September 15th in 1570, the town falls into the hands of the Ottomans, marking the end of the European rule over the island. The fort of Carigna becomes once more the stronghold of the new rulers. Only Turks are allowed in the town. The people of Carigna remain and claim their land. Sometimes they're even obliged to buy it back they try to rebuild what is left of their life. Christians and Muslims live side by side. Churches and mosques are erected. Commerce brings the two communities closer and the town regains its prosperity. Schools are built. The first municipality is created. By the end of July 1878, and in spite of the rough seas, Men of the British Royal Marines disembark in the little port of Carigna. The British rule of Cyprus has started. Life carries on in the little town. Christians and Muslims share this difficult life. In 1881, the census reads 1,192 inhabitants. Ships from Carigna, with their brave captains, travel all the way to the Black Sea. They go to Egypt. They cross the Aegean, the Ionian island, bringing back to the little town goods and products, adding to its prosperity. Foreigners, mainly English, fall in love with Carigna. They settle here and build their churches, the Anglican Church of St. Andrews, the Catholic Church of St. Elizabeth of Hungary. In 1889, the municipal council brings electricity to the town. The new premises of the municipality are built, the central market, the first hotel, the Actian, down by the sea, and the church of the patron saint of Carigna. Raya's newspaper is published. Its editor was a local literate called Yorgos Stavridis Rayas. The younger generations set themselves wholeheartedly to athletics, and little Carigna and her clubs prime and collect first prizes throughout the island. Clubs and cultural centers make their appearance, Armonia, the Laiko Kendro, the Youth Club, and many others. Carigna also develops in education, and Greek schools appear, both primary and secondary. The Severis Elementary School, the Gymnasium, the Commercial School. Life changes in 1922, as refugees from Smyrna find their way and settle in Carigna. Times are difficult, though, for everyone. After the 1931 events, the Greek flag no longer stands upright. People from Carigna, volunteers, join the motherland in her struggles during the war. Back home, literate and dedicated people from Carigna take over the education of the younger generations. George Loisidis, Savas Christis, Christophoros Christofidis, Nikos Granidiotis, Gleanthis Ioriadis, Frixos Vrajas, and last but by no means least, Njovi Dimitriadu Frango. Pioneers such as Spiros Haralambidis, Harilaos Dimitriadis, and Gostas Katsellis hold society together and stand by its development. However, the soul and the will of the Greeks of Cyprus could no longer bear to be under the British rule, and the Eoka struggle bursts out. The castle of Carigna becomes now the prison for the first freedom fighters. But the sun of freedom rose again in the little port of Carigna, and as the British moved out and the island became an independent country, Carigna was transformed into a unique tourist attraction for both locals and foreigners. It was the lush green mountains, 
the fresh sea breeze, the castle, the Bellabai's Abbey that attracted everyone. Prosperous and happy times were to come for all. Flower festivals, national celebrations, church rituals, athletic competitions gave the town of Carigna a new life. But not for long. Black clouds were gathering already by 1963, with the first intercommunal problems between the Greek and Turkish Cypriots. Nevertheless, life continued. A new town hall was built, and the discovery of the shipwreck by Aris Gariolu brought Kairinia in the front line of archaeological research. The people of Kairinia persisted and pertained that the town would continue to prosper. On July 20th of 1974, Turkish troops disembarked in the Bay of Karinya. Life came to a full halt. Everything ceased as the Turkish soldiers entered the city. Many refused to abandon their homes. The Dome Hotel witnessed days of sorrow and despair. The people of Karinya became enclaved in their own town and then became refugees. Ever since, Karinya is no more the town we used to know, the town that nursed our youth and our dreams. Its churches looted and abandoned, its schools changed in colour. The little harbour no more welcomes seafarers from the Aegean. Skies became cloudy, red flags were everywhere. The Bendadactylos range is deeply wounded. Over the past 35 years, the people of Karinya have not ceased to claim their human rights throughout the world. They claim their life, their sea and their homeland. They continue to hope for return. They pray to their patron saint.